Hi guys, welcome back to Country Cooking with Carly and Queen Kitty Gaming. Today I'm so excited because I'm making delicious apple crisp and it is toward the end of September so apples are in season. Perfect fall recipe. I can't wait to make this for you guys and I am making mine all organic today and I'm actually going to use coconut flour. Now from what I see with the recipes I've looked at, it looks like this is going to turn out absolutely delicious. All the other recipes, it was the first time I ever made it and they all turned out great. Now this will only be the second time I ever make apple crisp. It's a very forgiving recipe. You can use different proportions. Um, you can use different apples if you would like. You can use eight apples, six apples, ten apples. It's really a forgiving recipe and it is a great recipe for beginners still. So I hope you enjoy the recipe and let's get started. And now before you start the recipe, you want to make sure you preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So now I'm adding my coconut flour to the bowl, three quarters of a cup. So then you want to add half a teaspoon of salt and I'm going to use my natural sea salt here. And then again, this is a forgiving recipe. Um, some recipes I found use half a cup of brown sugar. Others use a full cup, even with the same amount of apples. So I guess you could go anywhere from a tight packed half a cup of brown sugar or lightly packed one cup of brown sugar. It really just depends on how sweet you want it. I am gonna use one cup of light brown sugar and lightly packed. So you wanna whisk this together just a little bit before you add your rolled oats. Now I'm gonna be adding one and a quarter cup of old fashioned rolled oats. I'm using organic here. You wanna use the large oats, not the little ones and organic is always best but again you can just use regular rolled oats with this so i will be adding my oats and you want to whisk this together just until it's mixed now what you want to do is cut up a half of a cup or eight tablespoons so a full stick of butter into little squares and make sure it's unsalted and your butter is cold. So we're just gonna open that up and chop it into little tiny squares. The smaller the better because then it will mix in a lot easier for you. So we're just gonna be chopping this up into tiny little squares small as you can get them. That'll just make life easier on you. <laughs> All right, guys and girls, so here comes the fun part. Well, actually the messy part. So now we're gonna be smooshing this butter into the mixture. You wanna smoosh those dry ingredients into the butter and that's what's gonna make your crumble. This is definitely messy, but this recipe is for old fashioned apple crisp. And this is the old fashioned way. Now you can use melted butter. You just wanna melt your butter if you don't wanna get your hands dirty. Um, and just put it over the mixture, set it aside so it cools down and then you can crumble it. That way also works. Might not come out as crumbly though. So I prefer this method. Cause again, the crumbles on top are my favorite part. <laughs> so just gonna get your hands a little dirty here, but. Yeah, some butter fingers, you know, but <laughs> it'll be easy to clean off. It actually feels kind of good, almost therapeutic. So just try to smush that together, crumble it as you go. Make sure you're smashing some of those oats and dry ingredients into your butter. Keep working that through until it's mixed pretty well. We are ready for the next step here, right after I wash my not so clean hands. So I will be right back. Okay guys and girls, I have set the delicious crumble topping aside and now it is time to peel and 
dice your apples. Now, I am using golden ginger apples. Um, I was looking for Golden Delicious, they didn't have it, so I got these instead. But you can use Golden Delicious, you can use Granny Smith apples, you can use Gala apples, really whatever apple you prefer. A lot of people like to use the Golden Delicious or Granny Smith, those seem like the most popular choices. But if you want something a little sweeter, then you can use a different apple. Again, this recipe is very forgiving. So I have my handy little apple peeler here, and I'm just going to start peeling. This doesn't have to be perfect, again, because some people just prefer slicing the apples and putting them in with the skin. I prefer this method, but don't stress about how perfect you get each little piece of skin off. Save as much of the apple as possible because of course that's the other delicious part and these apples look so good in season they look perfect all right guys and girls now it is time to slice and dice your apples now I have this apple slicer here which is so handy because it just kind of cuts the core right out for you and then I'm going to go ahead and chop the pieces up a little bit smaller, that way it's going to cook in much better. I don't want them too thick. But it does make nice little pieces, um, so you could just leave them like this. If you have an apple slicer and you don't really feel the need to make these any smaller, then that is fine. But I'm going to go ahead and make these smaller just so it cooks in even better. So I'm going to go ahead and core all these apples. Start to cut them and make them into a little bit smaller pieces. So now guys and girls, our apples are finally cored, diced and sliced. And I have transferred them to a large mixing bowl where we will be adding the rest of the delicious ingredients. So we're gonna start with a third of a cup of brown sugar. You can use granulated sugar here, but I do like the extra flavor that the brown sugar offers. All right, and now guys and girls, I'm gonna be adding about two tablespoons of lemon juice over the apples. It's gonna give it a nice extra little kick and really make that flavor come to life. And you want to add half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And now I'm going to be adding about one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Again, this recipe is really forgiving. You can just use one teaspoon if you like, but I always for more flavor. I definitely don't like bland tasting things, so when you can add extra flavor, I'm always going to do that. <laughs> Okay, guys and girls, you want to toss these really well. You want to get that lemon juice and the brown sugar, cinnamon, everything mixed into the apples really well. And then you're going to want to grease a 8x8 baking pan. You can also use 9x9. If you even only have 7x7, that'll work as well. Again, this is a pretty foolproof recipe. You can't really go wrong. It's fairly easy too. The hardest part is just coring and slicing and dicing these apples up. Other than that, it is pretty simple, guys. This is definitely a recipe first time cooks can use. If they want to impress guests or they're going to a party or potluck and they really want to make something good. I know you can do it. If I can do it, then you can do it. So now it's time to transfer to, again, our 8x8 baking pan. You can also use 9x9 or 7x7. All right, guys and girls, now it is time to add our apples to the pan. I actually had a 9x9 baking pan, which works perfectly. Again, you can use anywhere from 8x8, 9x9, or even 7x7 if that's all you have. Totally fine. Now you don't want to add these apples all at once. You kind of want to try to layer them in little by little. As much as possible. 
try just a little tiny diced piece of apple off camera and guys and girls this turned out seriously so good i love it oh my goodness the flavor and it's going to get even better once it bakes and releases all those delicious apple juices and gets mixed in with the crumble i definitely can't wait to taste test this one for you guys okay guys and girls it is time to top our apples with the delicious crumble topping oh my goodness this is gonna be so delicious i just had to try a little slice of the apple and it was so good so delicious i'm just using my hands here because that just makes life a lot easier and i can spread it evenly oh and one more thing when you are done putting the apples in your pan just make sure you get them as level as possible it's not going to be completely level i mean they're apples but <laughs> just get them as level as you possibly can and now for this step if there's any big lumps big crumbles you can kind of just use your fingers to crumble those up that's why i prefer this now this looks like a lot of crumble but the more the better for me <laughs> and also it's going to bake down those apples are going to soften and they're going to bake down a little bit so if it looks too high don't worry and i really don't think you can go overboard with the crumble anyhow because to me that is the best part of course the apples are delicious too i mean i don't know they're both delicious <laughs> so <laughs> i can't wait to taste test this for you guys honestly i cannot wait so i'm just going to try to make this crumble as even as possible pat it down and soon i'm going to put it in the oven that is set for 350 degrees for about one hour i'm probably just going to check it though after about 40 45 minutes since i am using a tin here typically you want to use a pan but i don't have a 9x9 baking pan I only had a 13 by 13 again you can use 7 by 7 which I didn't have either <laughs> so I'm using a tin it may cook a little quicker again sometimes you have to improvise and that's totally fine just make sure you check it if you have to use a pan like this all right we're ready to transfer this delicious apple crisp to the oven I can't wait to see how this turns out I think it's gonna be absolutely delicious so it's in the oven now and ready to bake. And I will see you guys in about an hour. Guys and girls, I just took this out of the oven. It looks like it turned out so good, so delicious. The smell, the aroma in the kitchen was just to die for. So good. I cannot wait to pair this with some vanilla ice cream and maybe some caramel drizzle and try this delicious homemade old fashioned apple crisp for you guys. And another bonus is that it was all organic ingredients, even the apples. I used coconut flour and it still set perfectly. You don't have to worry about a crust here. It's just a crumble. It's pretty foolproof. <laughs> so I know that if I can make a good one, you guys can. And I will see you very shortly because I cannot wait to dig into this. See you soon. Okay guys and girls, so I am all done making this delicious and organic apple crisp. That looks like it turned out absolutely delicious, just like all my other recipes. Now this one is the second time I've made it. Um, the first time I made it, I used all organic ingredients, and this time I used all organic ingredients. And I actually substituted the flour for coconut flour. So that makes the consistency just a little different, but still absolutely delicious. I would say it's just a little more crumbly than if you would use regular flour. It just kind of falls apart a little more once you've cut the piece. Other than that though, you really can't taste the difference. I know last time it turned out absolutely delicious, so I hope this time it did too. And I've paired it with some delicious all natural vanilla ice cream and caramel topping. So let me take a bite of this, I can't wait. Got to get some delicious ice cream in there with it and some of the caramel. Okay, let me take a bite. 
Okay guys, this is so good. I have to take a second bite. <laughs> it turned out, oh my goodness, so delicious. Like a party in your mouth. So good guys, that caramel on top just makes the dessert. It tastes absolutely delicious. And I would definitely advise to pair this with some ice cream and even some of that caramel topping if you have it. So delicious. It's sweet enough where it doesn't even need the caramel topping, but I think that really makes it taste delicious. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. This is recipe number 10. So still a fairly new YouTube channel. I'm gonna start trying to put out hopefully one recipe per week. I think I can handle that with my busy schedule. So I'm gonna reach for that. So hopefully I can, you know, show you guys one new recipe per week. And we will also be doing some more Roblox videos soon too. So with my daughter, so that should be fun. She's been really asking me to do some more. So stay tuned for that. And let me know what recipe you guys would like to see me make next. I'd really like suggestions in your comments, whatever you'd like to see me make, something that's simple, quick, easy, but also delicious. I just wanna thank you guys again for all your support so far. I couldn't do this without your support. It really helps and it keeps me going. And hopefully this becomes lucrative for me where I can make this my job. Right now it's more of just a hobby until I hit about 30 videos and hopefully I'll get more exposure then, but all the support so far, all the comments, likes, subscriptions, I appreciate each and every single one of them. Thank you guys so, so, so much. I really appreciate it. And don't forget you're awesome. Don't let anyone bring you down. You're amazing and you're loved. And please stay tuned for more delicious, easy, simple, and quick cooking videos. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.